In 1972, Vasil Stus was arrested for anti-Soviet propaganda. Until 3 a.m., they were going through the books, manuscripts, everything that was in the house, even the rags. I was watching them because it was unbelievable. I never would have thought that they would come to look for something here. What could we be hiding from them? Vasil Stus served his first sentence in the Mordovian prison camps after seven years of imprisonment. He returned to Kiev and joined the Ukrainian Helsinki group. In six months, he was arrested again, once more for anti-Soviet propaganda. When they were taking him at around midnight, he said these words, which are very important to me. My son, I understand very well what you went through today. Humiliation, despair, weakness. It's a horrible cocktail for a real man. But I'm begging you, don't let your eyes turn cold and send hatred into the world. As soon as you allow it, the world will respond to you in the same way. If you cannot forgive these people, try at least to understand them. I cannot do it now, unfortunately. Vasil Stus was sent to a Russian prison, where the majority of the men were serving time for murder. Members of the Helsinki groups were kept in separate cells. This is according to Levko Lukanenko, who was one of them. Vasil and I saw each other in prison when he first arrived. Then we were taken to the 35th zone on the Sekhsvyatskaya station. They placed us both in one cell. There we held each other's hands for the first time and said hello and hugged. It was a KGB operation and we understood its goal. They wanted to hear what Stus would tell me about Kiev. On the other hand, they knew that I would tell him about prison. What were we supposed to do? Stay silent and not talk to each other? We decided to talk, but if we wanted to mention last names, we would write them down on paper, burn it and eat it. In August 1985, Stus was sent to solitary confinement for leaning against his bunk and reading a book. In protest, the poet went on her hunger strike. He died at night on September 4th. On the first day, we didn't know what to make of it. I went to the head and asked him what happened to Vassil Stus. He asked why I defended him. He shouted at me and said that he was taken to the hospital. After that, Romashov, a Russian, told us that at night he heard Vassil scream.